think for me, um, the imposter syndrome came after. I remember we were about to hit the uh, go button on, I, I don't know if the website or the messaging. And we had this conversation of like, oh, I, I feel like I'm not ready. I feel it's not the right thing. And we had that moment and you're like, Dali, that's your imposter syndrome. I didn't have it before. And the reason why, Betsy, is I have, um, I have made myself comfortable with failure throughout my life. And actually, Amy Edmondson has beautiful, she wrote a beautiful book about that. But for me, um, just side notes, um, I don't know if it's the same schooling system. I don't think it's the same schooling system as the U.S., but our first year of primary school, so just after kindergarten, I failed that year. Like, who fails that? I failed that. I failed uh, two years um, out of high school. I did two years of law school that I failed. And so for me, failure was never uh, an issue because again, coming back to the point we made earlier, I always saw it as, oh, it's a learning opportunity. It just means that I'm not good yet at that. And there is another thing waiting for me. So that's why coming to you, I was really, uh, excited about the journey. The imposter syndrome happened when it became a reality. When mm -hmm. we worked together, we got the message like we're about to go, I think, live. I'm like, hold, hold on a second. I didn't yeah. si sign up for all that. <laughs> yeah. I'll hold your horses here. Okay. So I love this because this is this is an interesting way to look at like when these different types of like fears and challenges will arise. So as it relates to your backstory is like thing one is curiosity and seeing the big picture and bringing the connection has always been a part of your part of your DNA. The entrepreneurship is a part of your DNA. And so wherever you are, you can, you can use those skills, which will help you if you ever want to act on that entrepreneurial idea. Thing number two is there's a readiness component that even though you might have that inkling that you want to start something, you know, go focus on just being successful in your career in that particular way, but the readiness and the readiness might come with a variety of different things. But for you, it was all watching the suffering and watching all the stuff that happened with the pandemic. And then three, what got you to move from idea into moving into some sort of direction is getting clarity on your gifting, your passion. But number four, that for you, failure is not the issue. Failure is an option for you because of your passion around learning. That learning, having that learning mindset, that growth mindset, really for you makes that fear of failure a non-issue. That was not a thing for you. But when it came from moving from idea into reality, that's when the imposter syndrome reared its head for you. It might have, for other people, maybe it happened earlier in the process, but when we were like, all right, now we're going to hit play on this website, that's when it happened for you. Yeah. And I reflected on that bit and I realized um, what happened at that moment was the transition and the processing of change. I was so in action mode that I didn't process the transition that I was going through. Mm. And when that moment came in, I was still that corporate employee and I haven't made the switch to entrepreneur business owner. So it came too fast for my wow. internal transition. So once I think we talk about it and I realize that I'm like, oh, I have to make now this internal transition because now I'm business owner. I have to oh, bridge that gap. That's so beautiful. So that's where a lot of times I think that other programs don't work for a lot of people is it's all focused on action, action, action. But the reality is, is that it's not just the action. It's the actions on the surface, but underneath it is this identity shift that you were going through from, from being an employee to an entrepreneur. And you didn't really recognize that. So that's when all the questions like, do I have what it takes? Can I really make this thing work? That's when all of those things came up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, I think once I realized that the switch happened because it was the old me, the part of me that was secure in a corporate paying job that was like, okay, I don't recognize what you're doing here. This is not what I fit. This is not where I'm the most, um, performing so there was this gap that that started 